for it, but certainly not something they haven't seen all day today, as Hoopa has definitely been a presence across the board for all of these teams. We're taking a quick look here. Geese rolling through, getting a little bit of this APOM action before they, uh, uh, oh, I was going to say before they jump into that central area, but we've got that Dragonite Adesu that's going to be in there for random gaming. You know, we see very different character splits between the two teams here. We see Yerman's uh, Squavit invading the central area of Random Gaming, while Random Gaming sends not just Lucario, but also their Duraludon top path to push on this solo Lucario that Yerman has presented there. Yeah, they're, they're going to be able to stem out the Lucario here a little bit for Yerman if they so choose. There's something to, to note is, is that Duraludon for Random Gaming going to rotate back into their central area once a day? Desu gets done, or is this Squovit Nazu going to keep them from getting their levels, which means that the Dragonite's going to have to circle back again, and that, we're going to have to keep an eye on that, because Nazu doing some good work level 3 in the face of that level 4 Dratini. Well, it's worth noting there, you see both of those orange and blue buffs floating along the bottom of that Dratini there. Nazu failing to secure the ever-critical last hits on either of Random Gaming's important buff Pokemon. Now the bottom path, we've got some action around it. Those, uh, those bees here as Gatlu is still level three and they're gonna try and level up as er Erzeron and Kiva are on the chase. Roll out Wigglytuff, catches the Duraludon then clips the whole squad coming back through. Talking about a bowling ball clipping all the pins and yeah, they caught a receipt for that, but that was a good looking play. You see Duraludon here going to push off not one, but two opposing Pokemon with the knockout from that Dragon Pulse, which is incredibly powerful against low HP opposing Pokemon. Gatlu unsuccessfully, uh, or sorry, the Yermans uh, Squabbit unsuccessfully with trying to invade there and being knocked out for it. Yeah, three versus one, a little bit much for the Squovit Squirrel there as Random Gaming is back to their action. Nine's gonna get some points up top. Red Maw gonna try and stem that. Darts in, darts out. A Little bit of a punch to the grill there for triple nines as they're slowly making it back to their own, own spot here. And those points are gonna go in for Random Gaming. Players on both sides of the team running all around the map here. A little bit difficult to parse in the traditional sense which path is specifically ahead or behind. But if we look at the levels here, Yerman is a little bit ahead on some of the metrics, but not all of them. Still incredibly close game as we head to the ever important second Bs that are the next point of contention in our match. That Greedon scrambling around all over uh, Urzeron there trying to get some damage in. Not uh, worse for wear is the blue, the purple team Yermans as they're down on their base and look at that rollout Wigglytuff Acroma just getting all over the map as Geese and Acroma are trying to hold it down in the face of three players they're pushing Blaine on the verge they get KO'd by the Duraludon and now the Lucario is trying to work its way in they're in and out no problem as the defense for Random Gaming is holding up tight that goal zone is still standing great look here as Dreadnought has arrived we see Yerman utilize that hyperspace hole from Hoopa to try and get down to the bottom path in advance, but they're unable to push that advantage. Random Gaming getting positioning around this Dreadnought, but that close combat by the Lucario? No, it is the right side team that secures the objective. The shields just got deleted instantaneously. Too much damage sitting on Random Gaming as Erzeron able to take a KO Shrieka 2. They're pushing back into the face of the team that got the Dreadnought, but here comes Geese getting KOs of themselves as they eat it off the back of the Duraludon. And now Red Maw's getting worked through by the Random Gaming Duraludon, but it's a KO Shrieka 4 back the other way. This sentient, uh, this sentient refrigerator, whatever you want to call it, piece of machinery, the tower doing work down here in the bottom lane, getting four KOs, chalk them up for another one here as it is just in the face of this Random Gaming squad. Huge knockout for the Dragonite here on Random Gaming side, able to knock out that Duraludon that is an entire level above it here. Can it get yet another with the Hyper Beam? And there is a Unite move, and we see another one go down. Can we get a third? We're working on it, and you find it. That's a Hyper Beam straight to the back, ripping through that Lucario, sending them packing for sure. And now Random Gaming in the face of this Hoopa and this Ninetales, this A9, as Akroma gets caught a little bit. They're getting chased, but let's see if they're going to be able to stick around. A good rollout clips a bunch of players, knocks them up, and there we go. The Greedon's in the mix, and the Greedon gets a KO on the A9, and now they're working back through on the Rotom. What a teamwork play between Gatlu and Akroma as they're able to seal up the Rotom as well. And now they're putting the pressure on Hoopa. Good night, sir, as they are sent back to their spawn point. Now Nazu's trying to stem the bleeding as they have to fight off their Unite move and try and get in the face of Red Maw, keep these points from going in. Here comes Blaine, fruitless as they sit in this goal zone, and the Rotom's just on the verge of finding its way in. Yerman Burger Flipper's coming in with the defense, able to pick up KO on that Greedon for sure. And now they're working through Rotom, and their defensive stand works. 
while random gaming was pushing that road top successfully in the top we saw they were also busy in that bottom half knocking out that ever important outside goal for Yerman, giving random gaming an incredible positional advantage for this second dreadnought here we see not only dragonite but also duraladon here able to get ready to secure this objective as it gets melted but hoopa bringing in some friends and the objective is just deleted instantaneously there by our random gaming team on the right side Oh, here we go. Lucario takes out the Dragonite. Now again, Yerman's moving through. That's a Unite move by Geese to try and protect that goal zone. They're able to keep the pressure on, take out the Lucario themselves. Working through, that's Kao Shrika 2 on the opposing Duraludon. And now Geese is feeling it moving forward here as those points are going in for random game in the top goal zone. Great work, good split effort here. And get a little bit of defense, best side of offense. And it's just looking good in the top half for random gaming as they're up by about 85 points. It feels like random gaming has been actually everywhere on this map at any given point. They're securing Rotom at the top while simultaneously breaking a gold bottom. They're securing a Dreadnought in the bottom while they're successfully pushing the second gold top. They are currently up on levels. They're currently up by almost 100 points. This is definitely random gaming's game to lose as we head on in towards this final stretch. Unite move by the Greedon comes in and they're working with Nines. Nines is trying to push back Geese so Geese can't play defense. They close out the goal zone and here we go. We're belching now. Dreldon goes down to Lucario combination a chrome is in the mix and they're getting outpaced here is the green gonna go for the score they do and now the cario is forced on getting in there's the chroma circles in to the goal zone to get a little bit of hp roll out wiggly tough not gonna get it right now as the chrome is finally forced to retreat jumps back into the mix nines nazu get in there can they close this thing out they're buying time and is the support gonna show up for yerman it's not as they keep pushing and a chroma standing tall in the face of all these pokemon are you kidding me as we see this endless scoring dancing around on the bottom, Greedon just doing what it does best, being on the opponent's side, being as annoying as it possibly can. That being said, Greedon was buying good time there, even if it didn't score a ton of points. We see Yerman secure this row top top, creating a lot of valuable map pressure in while this third Dreadnought of the game is getting ready to spawn in the bottom path. Yeah, all of Yerman is positioned around it, but here we go. Random Gaming is starting to move that direction here, and that it's going to have to just be a team fight. If Random wants to try and flip this thing, they're a bit late. We'll see how close this thing is to being burned down to third HP, and that darts in. The left side takes it. Yerman takes it. Duraludon is able to seal it up for the squad, and now they're pushing back in the face of Random Gaming. Gee's going to try and hold it down, firing some beams here. Are they coming through here? That little Dragon Pulse going to ring out, and now Akroma puts the chase, little roll out, hides in the grass, and Yerman su successfully pushed back in that bottom path we see level 14 dragonite for random gaming to just level 13s on your side a little bit over leveled here for random gaming as we head into the end engagement random gaming is not a big fan of taking full end game team fighters so i'm going to see given the level advantage do they choose to flip this zapdos objective or will they instead choose to try and fight with Gatlu and Unite moves are coming out. Hoop on bounds everywhere as the Gatlu use their Unite move and working through. They're belching all over the Zapdos. Zapdos at about third HP. Gatlu's down. Two players down for Random Gaming. Everyone's still standing for Yerman. Redmaw's on the edge. They're getting picked off here as Random Gaming still gets the, the, the Zapdos in the middle. Unlock these goal zones. That's a Hunterburger going in. KO Streak a two for the Lucario here. But these points are starting to rain in. Redmaw's going to jump back to base to try and play some defense as they're up by 260 ish points. Make that just about 70 ish points here. As Yerman brings parity a little bit to the scoreboard. Yeah, we see Random Gaming choose to go with their typical strategy of working to secure that that objective. That is why they have that Hyper Beam Dragonite. But it was important to note, they kind of lost the fight that was occurring while that objective was being secured. Only three of them making it out post Zapdos, and only two of those three being able to get those dunks in. A less than 100 point differential here means that Yerman only needs to put together a push that makes a single 50 point dunk while we are in double time. The two characters I'm watching is the Dragonite and uh, and the, the Greedent here for Random Gaming as they both carry score shields. Now, so does the Greedent for Yerman Burger Flippers. So those are the characters you got to be looking out for here, these Pokemon, as they're going to make the final throws of this match very interesting. Yeah, and we see here pretty typical positioning for Random Gaming the way they like to play. They're saying, okay, I'm not going to defend against your scores. I probably can't do that. Instead, we're going to send our people to go over and cap. And actually, it looks like they were, in fact, able to defend successfully there, pushing off that, uh, that green in the center. And they get yet another score in up top with that Dragonite, increasing their lead to over 100 points. So we're going to see this first game go over to Random Gaming here. 
hoop unbound, and we see the Unite move by the Dragonite jumping to that middle zone here as that retreat is by Nazu, and they're going to try and score here with the Duraldon just chipping in, keeping them from scoring. Good round of defense by Random Gaming here, and I think they just won themselves a game one in the Losers' Finals. We see Random Gaming taking that first match down here as the scores total up. 576 to 413, taking that advantage and pushing it again. Like I mentioned when we were heading in here, I'm going to be interested to see if we see Yerman change things up on their side. Their Duraludon was unable to push out the consistent. On certain uh, sides of the map here, and that's what I'm looking for. How will this Yerman Burger Flippers team move across this map to hopefully bring parity in this match and win themselves here game two to force this thing to a game three? Okay, we see our Squavit for Yerman luring that central path in bait again. It was a little bit less than successful in the first game. We also see Random Gaming changing up here a little bit. If remember in the first game, they sent their Duraludon top path, this time sending their Lucario solo and choosing to be two to three in the bottom path. Absolutely, Nazu putting the pressure on early here. And the point's already going in for Random Gaming. They're pushing the, the, the goal zones here. Gatlu, that's Squovit, so, so durable here. Oh, Chroma hits Wigglytuff right now. And that rollout is already starting. Is Look how far up Gatlu is up the path here, forcing the Duraludon to come in and Blaine to work through and finally get that KO on the pesky squirrel. Yeah, Squavit going down to the knockout, but more importantly, it brought that Duraludon from Yurman to that bottom path and out of that central area before it could even complete knocking out all those wild Pokemon. Again, effectively buying time, which is what we see Greedens doing quite consistently. Yeah, that investment by Random Gaming to take care of Nazu was big. They had three characters working through and Nazu still got some points in before getting taken out. Good show by them and they have to be happy about it. But now Random Gaming getting all the points in back the other way in the face of Nazu who can't really challenge three players getting into their goal zone. Now, one thing that I'm going to be interested to see how it plays out here, because Duraludon was chosen to send the bottom path by Random Gaming this time through, their bottom path is the one currently lacking a little bit of experience, still not even quite ticking five yet for Random Gaming, so missing that powerful Dragon Pulse ability until just now. Yeah, just now picked it up, and I'm still keeping an eye on Gatlu as they're rolling into the top path here, using that little springboard into the center, and we're going to get some of the fish in the middle. Blaine working back, though, and this Ninetales hasn't been quite a factor that we would have liked to seen with their freezing abilities here, but I'm sure it's going to come into play as Blaine, again, is the soul of this Yerman Burger Flipper squad. We see Hoopa coming into the center path for Yerman, trying to get that Squabbit out, but unsuccessfully uh, pinching, but... They're speaking of pinching all of random gaming getting caught out here in the center as three of them get knocked out here. Great adjustment and random gaming caught flat footed here as Yuriman is really feeling it. Great comms there to get everybody together and rein into some of the tougher to knock out Pokemon, such as that Wigglytuff and that Greedon here doing good work. Now, Yuriman doesn't want to over push here. They don't over want to stay there welcome. I'm glad they're retreating because that would have ended up in a bad news bear situation for them. You see those bees coming up here, providing a key amount of experience for the team. Yerman basically saying, it's okay. We're giving up our top path here for a few points so that way we can get the positional advantage for this Dreadnought because the first Dreadnought is an important source of experience to get our team ahead in the early parts of this match. Well, Dreadnought's here and Yerman Burger Flippers have arrived first and they're working through and they're prioritizing that Duraldon Geese. Geese gets worked through, they get KO'd by the Ninetales. We're moving through here and now Dreadnought's getting just shredded and the Duraldon Duraldon on Yerman, Burger Flippers takes it, now Chroma's on the verge, they get knocked out by the hyperspace hole, that defensive hyperspace hole comes through with a little bit of offense and gets that KO, and Random Gaming just falling victim back and forth after losing the Dreadnought. Yeah, we see excellent micro positioning from Yerman's side of the gaming there. They prioritize knocking out the opposing Duraludons, that way <laughs> only their character with the powerful Dragon Pulse to secure was left when that Dreadnought got low, allowing them to easily take that objective in the face of Random Gaming's remaining characters there. Akroma doing great work playing bumper bowling there with themselves, using that rollout and chipping up the squad as Random Gaming pulled up for the support here. And now they're going to try and play defense on this goal zone. They're doing pretty good getting some KOs, make that two as all of Random Gaming's across this goal zone and defense stand works out. Double KO for Gatlu, you got to feel it. Uh, but it all started off with the Chroma, the Wigglytuff. Yes, they got KO'd, but that was a good rollout there to buy some time. 
We see our random gaming side pressuring this outside gold, perhaps wanting to get rid of it so they don't have that positional disadvantage leading into the second Dreadnought that will eventually be spawning here. Levels actually quite close between these two teams after Yerman's failed push on that second point bottom. Yeah, Desu getting chased a little bit. They're forced to retreat, use a little bit of a dragon dance to buy some space, and they're going to try to get into their lane to slow down nines. Here comes a Chroma, and now they're pushing the bottom goal zone here as German tries to play defense, and Gatlu flies into that center area, that opposing center area here. Kiva and Blaine going to suss out what's going on in this bottom path, see if there's an opportunity to score, as bang, <laughs> that's just some points raining into the top goal zone. Kiva showing up just a bit late, and Red Maul just going to take some of these Bs. Feels good about this exchange right here as they're three levels above. Very aggressive positioning from Yerman here, eliminating the entirety of the speed zone from Random Gaming as this second Dreadnought is coming up. I wonder, will we even see Random Gaming try to contest this objective? It looks like they are coming down, but it's gonna take them an extra long time to get there without that speed flex zone to hurry them along. Yeah, Hoopa coming in, getting the squad there early. This Dreadnought's fluffy tail and it's getting worked through. There we go, left side takes it again. It's the Nine Tails Blaine this time as the Unite moves are flying and the battle is kicking off. I think I just saw a belly flop here by the Greedon coming through and that Hoopa Unbound is literally chasing the squad up the path. That poor Dorado Aladon catching fists from space here as they get KO'd by the combination of them and the Greed and Kita, Kiba feeling good now just getting some bees, just punishing the bees for existing in their path of this hoop unbound. Yeah, Yerman really getting rewarded there for the positional advantage they created for themselves on the map in that bottom path. Random Gaming was just too slow to get to the objective without that speed flex zone. And then when their Duraladon tried to escape, it didn't have a second point to fall back to that it could feel safe at. Herzeron feeling good, getting a KO from themselves, and now just going to try and take down this Rotom, not let it get in. But look where Random Gaming is. They're all over this bottom path. They're swarming together, the Greed and the Wigglytuff, the, the Dragonite here. And now they're working into the central area of Yerman trying to get some of that experience. Gotlu sitting in the middle. They're just going to go for a score. Too easy. That score shield is too strong. And now they've got two on two presence here as Gotlu rolls through as well. And now we have Nazu trying to show who the better greeting is here as the KOs start raining in and Blaine finishes off the wiggly tough Akroma. We are nearing the, we just passed the three minute and 30 mark in this match. There's not a single level 13 character yet. These players kind of running past each other, making sure they can put a lot of pressure up over almost 250 points for both teams here. It's a pretty incredible amount before the Zapdos is spawned. Oh, without a doubt. Now Random Gaming collapses on nines and the Nazu, the Greedon, as the Unite moves are already flying again. And the Duraludon Geese goes down to Lucario. Nines caught out of nowhere here. They get chased by a Desu. That's a KO. And now they're working back into the goal zone. They got to protect this thing. Hyper Beam goes for the mark here as it's a KO streak of two for the Dragonite. Don't step into my field, says them, as the Greedon works through. And now it's a KO streak of three for the big old dragon. Look how friendly the orange dragon looks and look how dangerous it can be. Dragonite, one of the better characters in the game for knocking out the thicker Pokemon like Greedon. One of the reasons why Dragonite's Hyper Beam is so potent at securing objectives is because it deals extra damage based on how much health its target has. And let me tell you, dude, Greedon's got a lot of health. Greedon does in fact have a lot of health and more action kicking off in the top lanes. It's random gaming swarming all over these Yerman Burger Flipper squad as Kiva is sought in the backside of nowhere and Red Maw is not letting them go without some pressure as the rest of random gaming finds Rotom and sends it down the path. These Rotoms at the very end before the Zapdos spawns are some of the best in the game. They create an incredible amount of map pressure. You either have to let it crash. And we see the positional advantage here is huge for Random Gaming as they are in the pit, ripping this objective before Yerman can even show up. Random Gaming takes it, and you're right. They take it before they can even show up here. The Dragonite goes straight for the long distance Draco impact, and they're going to find have trouble finding the goal zone. Finally raining in for a Hundo Burger here as Lucario scores 86 up top, and that Wigglytuff is going to try and find a Hundo Burger's home right in the middle, straight duckets. That's a Hundo Banger straight in the middle, and now Random Gaming, it's all about playing that defense, but they do have that far goal zone up, which is a great catalyst for scoring points if you're Yerman Burger Flippers. Not, they're gonna need to score more than a few points here. Even if they put the maximum into this outside goal, they are down by 300 plus points at the moment. They need to crack this outside goal, they need to crack the second goal, and they also need to score points right in Random Gaming's face in that home base. 
Great Unite move by the Wigglytuff to try and stems that. Keep that defense up. Kiva's on the verge, but here comes the Greedon off of the Unite move, and they're all getting portaled back in here as they're working through with full HP. They close the goal zone out with 100. They're still down by 230 here. We have, I think, we still need to pick up some more points if you're Yarma Burger Flippers, and you have to push collectively. Unite move by the, uh, uh, the Duraludon helps push through as they close out that goal zone. Okay, the point lead is only 130, and Yerman Burger Flipper's still pushing. Here's that final push. While this push was happening, though, Random Gaming sent someone across the map to score more points. Now, we don't just need 100 more points on Yerman's side. We need 200 more points still. 40 gets in, but that is not going to be nearly enough, as the remaining members of Yerman are knocked out in Random Gaming's base. And I think this is the end of the game, dude. Yep, that's how I'm feeling, too. KO Shriek, a three there for the Duraludon, ending the way this thing started, it feels like, as Gatlu just gets more free points in, because, of course, that's just Greedon's job, as we're entering garbage time here. And Random Gaming has to be feeling good for punching their ticket to another Grand Finals. Yeah, so we saw smallest of adjustments here on Yerman's side, choosing to bring up those score shields on a variety of their characters heading into this game too. But the extra scoring potential simply from adding that item was not enough for them to keep up with the incredible amount of burst and secure that Random Gaming had at those objectives, especially at the Zapdos there. Final score being 518 to 797, this incredibly high scoring match. Great.